Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here right there with Nikki Kinzer. Hi, Nikki. Hello, everyone. Welcome. You feeling good? You feeling strong? Your Kung Fu is strong? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, especially after the pre-music we had before the recording started. It, right? Why not? So much. <laughs> I'm ready to dance. So much. We are. We have a fantastic <laughs> show today. We're, I'm, I'm very excited about our conversation today because, uh, you know, it's in my space. Uh, and, and I love it whenever we get to talk about other great podcasts. And we've got a new one coming that is, is launching very soon. And the proprietors of said podcast establishment have joined us today to introduce it to our audience. But before we do that, head over to TakeControlADHD.com to get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to our mailing list right on the homepage and get an email each time a new episode goes live. You can connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at TakeControlADHD. And if you support the ADHD podcast, if you're a longtime listener and your life has been impacted positively by something that we have done here over the last six years, we sure hope you'll consider supporting us with just a few dollars a month on Patreon, patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. Your support gets you into the private Facebook group where if you were there right now, you'd be able to see this and see us. Yes, and you, would be, <laughs> you would. You'd be able to see the dancing and you would hear <laughs> Paul Stanley from Kiss uh, and 45 minutes of stage banter. Uh, that's what you get. That's no, that's not get. true. No, that's what you get. They like it or no, not. No, no, no. Because no. now they're going to think, yeah, they're going to think they're going to have to listen to 45 minutes of that. They have to. That's actually the gateway. They have to listen to all 40 in order to, <laughs> never mind. All oh, right. No, Thank that is you not to, true. He's making <laughs> thank stuff you to up. to everyone who has already <laughs> uh, supported us over there, patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. And, and thanks to all of you who are thinking about uh, helping us out over there. All right, here we go. James Ochoa is back, and this time he's brought family. <laughs> You'll hopefully remember James from our conversation with him last year, author of Focused Forward, Navigating the Storms of Adult ADHD. He's founder of and director of the Life Empowerment Center in Austin, Texas. James joins us with his son, Jules, recent grad of the fine Clark University and researcher in cognitive neuroscience, oh, and podcaster. The Ochoas are here with us today to talk about their new podcast, The Complex, a narrative fiction show that aims to unravel the complexities of ADHD through a cadre of eclectic tenants of an apartment. James and Jules Ochoa, welcome to the ADHD podcast. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. I really, really appreciate the introduction, and I love the banter. Uh, it's so much fun on our ADHD neurology. It's just uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm having more and more fun doing this. And uh, uh, I, I can't thank you both enough for everything you do and getting the word out around difficulties around ADHD and the number of years, I mean, really six years is just such an incredible space to really be uh, helping those with this diagnosis. And, and our project, um, uh, The Complex, has just been uh, such a fun, shiny object. It's only been 15 months since inception. Um, and I'm going to let my son, Jules, sitting here next to me, uh, tell us a little bit about The Complex. Uh, I wound up certainly being the executive producer and part of the cast, of course. Um, and you know what the executive producer means? That's I got I got to fund the process. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that's what the executive producer. Congratulations! Uh, that's about it. Uh, that's about it. Um, but I'll let Jules take it from here. Tell us a little bit about the complex, and then we'll talk about what we want to do. Well, again, thanks for having us on. Uh, this is really has been an incredibly fun project to work on. It started from just kind of a random idea on a road trip that I was taking with my dad to come back down from Clark University from Massachusetts to Texas. Um, and, uh, you know, we were talking about a podcast that I had done in college on schizophrenia. And he was came up with this random idea that, hey, let's do a podcast on my book. And I was like, uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Sure. That'd be that'd be interesting. <laughs> well, yeah, that. that sounds I've like a great a idea. idea. <laughs> I'm like, I've never done. Okay, that was just a school project, but sure. Um, and you know, I I I re I kind of like downplay it, but like I do really have a passion for podcasting, and it is something that I've found a lot of fun in. Um, and so you know, I worked with his writing coach and editor, and uh, we wrote six episodes of a, you know, of a podcast that outlines the life of ADHD and does it in a very entertaining and kind of engaging way. Um, Cause you're just, you're just hearing the, this almost theater esque podcast uh, played out. 
in front of you. And then after that, uh, I'll be interviewing James uh, about some of the most ADHD moments kind of in that episode and how to navigate them successfully and how to kind of, uh, you know, try and prevent that from getting into these tailspins in the future. Yep. Um, so how it's kind of structured is uh, the complex episode itself will come out in one week. And then the week after that, uh, a section called Afterthoughts will come out where I interview James and then it alternates like that every week. Oh, fantastic. So you don't actually have to wait two weeks to listen to the next show because then you can listen to you guys talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's going to be, it's such a, I was really looking for a, um, a practical, fun way to get the concepts in my book out. Um, and in a way that began to normalize the distress and ways to have some fun with it, but also really ways to, to get information out there, right? This is an issue around emotional and mental stress on ADD that is such a conundrum. It's been my biggest clinical uh, piece to manage and deal with. Um, I'm also happy to say that actually just this morning, I started my training consultation groups professionally teaching other therapists about what I know here in Austin, Texas. So I had a group of seven therapists. Oh, that congratulations. Was just, Fantastic. Uh, it was, well, you talk about fun, shiny stuff. I <laughs> really, I really want to change the world, particularly with therapists as well, on how this is seen and how it's treated. That's great. Let's get started and, and give people a little taste, just a little taste. Let's do it. Uh, we have two clips we want to play on the show today, and that's uh, w you want to set up the first one for us, Jules? The first clip kind of just gives you a walkthrough of the complex. You hear two of the characters. One of them uh, is myself, and the other is a character named Amanda, uh, who is probably the most classic form of ADHD that we have in the complex. Um, she is a college student. Uh, just, you know, kind of trying to figure out what she wants to do. Everything from marine biology to finance uh, is kind of her interests. Um, but she can't really decide on one. And she's living at the complex. And, um, you know, we get to see kind of some of her escapades as she tries to deal with the other ADHD tenants at the complex. I think it'll be very apparent once we get this clip rolling. It's a lot yeah. of fun. Oh, yeah. I think so, too. Right, here we <laughs> Here we go. Tell me, how can I help you today? Well, you know, I don't really think I need therapy per se, but I thought it'd be good to just talk to somebody because a ton of stress has been building up in my life recently. Okay. Sounds like a good place to start. Well, yeah. I mean, the people in my apartment complex are driving me insane, for one. What? what are these your neighbors? Well, sort of. I mean, I live there, but I also own the building and manage it. It's called The Complex, and it's not just a regular apartment building. It's kind of a lifelong dream of mine, actually. It's a green-built, co-housing, sustainable development. Everyone has their own space, but we also share common areas, almost like a dorm. There's ride-sharing, there's a food garden, and people take turns harvesting and watering the plants, or th at least theoretically they do. And I have great tenants. Different ages, different backgrounds, all really interesting people. But times like this morning just make me want to walk away and never come back. Knock it off, Bernard! I'm trying to sleep right now. Hey, Amanda. Is there a problem? Seriously, Jules, my last caffeine just wore off, and I swear, Bernard plays that trumpet every morning like it's his day job. I mean, it is his day job. You can't be a musician if you don't practice. Can he not do it so early? Well, it's 11 a.m., but sure, I'll talk to him. I don't know why I always leave everything to the last minute. I had a geography project I had to finish last night, and I couldn't get it started until, like, midnight. Then I realized I had to go out and get a bunch of sticky notes because I had run out. I always do this. Don't be so hard on yourself. I'm sure you'll do great on that project. Cute pajamas, by the way. Is that the fish from Finding Dory? No. They're queen angelfish pajamas. Duh. Uh. <laughs> Aren't they fish from Finding Dory? That's so good. That, that conversation literally happens in my house between my two kids. Uh, and <laughs> my son is practicing his voice. Does he have to practice his voice in the house? Wait, literally, he has in to practice house. his voice in the house. So early in the morning at 11? <laughs> Come on. Right, right. 
<laughs> this is fantastic. So, uh, Jules, let's talk just uh, briefly uh, about the your your process here. I mean, it was 15, 15 months from in, from that that fateful drive. It's kind of a novel thing not to have it be you know two people talking podcast to really approach this from a from a narrative fiction perspective, which I think is really fantastic. And and I was at uh, you know I was at PodCon uh, in Seattle a couple months ago, and and this was. The thing that I mean, there is a giant void in the podcasting universe of people who are who are trying to do these sort of narrative fiction podcasts. It's it, it is such a fantastic opportunity. Uh, how did you how did you approach it, and what what made you think this is a thing that's going to help you tell this story? You know, I came at this podcast knowing the exact population that it was going to, which was ADHD. You know, and so I wanted something that was at least a little bit more engaging than the classic talk podcast that lasts for an hour, hour and a half, even sometimes two hours. Because that, I mean, I would, you know, I've, I, even I would lose attention not being ADHD with that kind of thing. And so I wanted some way to kind of illustrate it um, and, and make it more engaging than just that talk podcast. And when I was uh, brainstorming a little bit with uh, the writing direct or the writing coach and editor of my dad, Robin Chatsnoff. Um, we were talking and we were kind of playing around with this idea of, of this almost radio theater, this, this, um, like kind of story, uh, fiction story of a podcast. And, um, you know, it came up, we came up with the idea that I could be going to James for like some counseling and you could see these flashbacks into the complex of when I start explaining these uh, these moments that I was going through, and you know, I think it just really clicked because it made it a lot more relatable to the listeners, so that they can actually see these characters and they can relate to these characters and they can like see what they're going through and see what they themselves are going through, and then kind of pull from that. And, um, you know, I think the afterthoughts especially will be useful um, because we'll be talking about these specific characters and what they were going through. And people can relate that to themselves, uh, even if they're not ADHD, even if they're just around ADHD mm -hmm. or even uh, treat it professionally. It, it will be so, so useful to kind of humanize it and make it a little a little bit less um, clinical and a little bit more kind of real and relatable. I think you do a great job. Thank you. I think, Thank yeah, you. absolutely. I, I do too. I'm curious, uh, uh, James, from your perspective, when you approach this, uh, you know, as author of the book and uh, successful practice and thought leader in the space, right? As a professional thought leader in the space, you know, when you approach this from the perspective of narrative fiction, how do you make sure uh, that, uh, you know, that you guys are including all of the uh, you know, all of the, the, the right sort of, you know, practical professional stuff that you normally would. And if you're sitting down across from somebody. Yeah. And I think it's a great question, Pete, because I had to ask myself professionally, um, especially regarding kind of the exposure vulnerability element uh, that happens on ADHD and the stress we feel from that. Uh, and I had to process through, you know, is this making fun of those people? You know, um, and so it's a fine balance between having fun with the characteristics and the dynamics in it, but also being serious enough to say, hey, this is a real condition and there are some answers for these kinds of things. And this is what where where the afterthoughts grew out of this. It's like, how do we really give someone something from this? Um, and then, you know, we had to be really careful regarding kind of the nature of uh, clinical issues, so to speak, on ADHD. And I don't want to. Um, uh, create an element that's going to be harmful again to someone for different reasons that I can't predict. And so um, part of that was, you know, how much we go into characters, how it's written, and the scripts were rewritten several times mm -hmm. to kind of, so uh, Jules and Robin would sit down and write together, and then they would have a meeting with me, and we would go over these pieces about what I would say clinically and how that would match. And so we did a lot of uh, a piece or a lot of writing back and forth together, Pete, in a way that kept it balanced between fun and humor and also some significant help in kind of how to move it forward. But yeah, I have to tell you, it, it definitely feels a, there's a little bit of a risk taking in my own ADHD mm -hmm. diagnosis about how it's going to be received and things. But 
Um, I know that learning to laugh at ourselves and laughing with ourselves is a critical element of managing this condition. Well, and part of your book, I mean, I think a, a big emphasis in your book is about accepting your ADHD. And so I think in a lot of ways, that's what you're, you're um, expressing is that you can, you can accept these things, you know, and sometimes they're funny and sometimes they're not, you know, it just depends on what's going on. But yeah, yeah, it is. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been a, quite a ride. I, I will have to tell you, I had no idea 15 months later, this is what we would come out with. Uh, I wasn't even sure it could be done. Um, and early on, I, I thought I was a little too far out on the edge in what we were doing, but, uh, Robin and Jules both convinced me, no, we want to keep driving with this. This yeah. is something here. What, what is, what does that mean? Too far out on the edge? What were you, uh, uh what were you concerned about, uh, more specifically? Curious. About that. You know, clinically, I, 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 I really, in my book, there's a fine edge between the science say behind this condition. Okay. And the fact that this is a real issue and that uh, I don't want to be branded and I don't want to be seen as someone who is a shiny object around this and just trying to uh, get exposure and image. I want to really produce something that's real. And that's a very fine balance because there is so much information, potentially misinformation in the field about this condition that really throws people off center and awry. And I absolutely did not want that to be what was going to be in this podcast. It had to be playful, but serious enough. So to me, that was an edge of a risk to kind of say, I don't want to produce something that's going to be a problem or that's going to be an issue. I want to produce something that's going to be a resource. Yeah. Uh, if, does that make sense, Pete? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, and I, I totally get that, that, that sort of fear of the fear of being fluff, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I totally yeah, get that. yeah. 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 Or being just it's it's a pie in the sky. Nobody can reach it. And it's really what I tried and focus forward that the, the, the strategies are very pragmatic uh, and very real. But I'm also talking about things that are pretty edgy regarding using the imagination of your mind mm -hmm. to help calm your sense of self, to build this internal resource of strength. And but that has been the most effective way after almost 30 years in the field to say, this is how you teach people with ADHD to use internal resources, not just develop strategies, not just go after medication, not just understand what it is. You got to live with this every day in and out. And I certainly do personally myself and the idea of storms and managing them. And I think this podcast is important, too, because it it doesn't just outline the life of the ADHD -er. mm -hmm. it outlines the life of people around the ADHD -er as well. And mm -hmm. that is as important, if not more important, in in uh, creating this dynamic that James is talking about. Because if the person with ADHD doesn't have the support systems around them that allow them to to build these internal worlds and and create all these strategies and and really move forward with their ADHD, then it's it's going to be nearly impossible for them to actually do that. Um, and mm -hmm. the people around them, you know, need to understand and, and know what they're going through. And I think this podcast is a very good way to illustrate that uh, in, you know, uh, kind of mass consumer. And, uh, consumer uh, and I have to tell you, okay, uh, there's a bit of authenticity here too. Okay. So Jules does not have a diagnosis of ADHD. <laughs> he has lived with me who does and his and older brother yeah. who does. My wife does not. <laughs> and so there's some authenticity that Jill says, I've lived around it. Yeah. And uh, he wanted to make sure. I make really sure have. That included in this space. We did this podcast. It's not just the people. So there's a little authenticity. Here. Well, and actually... <laughs> Jules, I'm glad you bring that up because I was telling my husband about this interview and how um, I was looking forward to it. And I was excited to talk to you guys about this. And he asked me, he's like, well, what, what are, what are they talking about? And I told him a little bit, you know, brief explanation of the complex. And I said, from what I've heard, what's cool about it is that you're seeing it from the ADHD -ers perspective, but you're also looking at it from this apartment manager who has to understand what's going on too. And so it's interesting you brought that up because I picked up on that right away. Now I'm somebody who doesn't have ADHD. So maybe that's why I picked that up so quickly. Um, but it definitely, I think is a resource, you know, going back to the first part of our conversation, it isn't just for people with ADHD. It's for people who live with ADHD or, you know, people who live with people who have ADHD, 
uh, parents who have kids who have ADHD. I mean, anything I think to, to, to help them understand. And then I got to say something else about your authenticity. Um, James, this is a compliment to you and your wife. When I met you at the Chad conference, uh, you're one of my favorite people. Like, I love your book. I absolutely love the message because it's different than all the other messages that you hear from a lot of ADHD books. And I knew when I met you and your lovely wife, it, the authenticity of both of you are so, it's so real what your purpose is and, and what you're trying to do here. So um, I definitely give kudos. Thank you. I re- I'm humbled by that. And uh, my wife, Edie, also had a great time meeting you. She really appreciated your energy uh, and felt camaraderie immediately. And, and being around and, you know, around it and managing it and treating it. But uh, no, this is um, this is absolutely a dream come true in ways I couldn't have imagined. And um, it, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. And I tell you, from 1989 to now, uh, the passion just continues to grow. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm floored at this point. It's just uh, it's been a lot of fun. And I'm glad it's reaching audiences like this to help. It's really, really good. Well, we're very excited to be a part of that. Do you want? We have one more clip, uh, Jules. Do you want to? Do you want to set us up on this this second little clip before we wrap up? So this second one is actually kind of one of my favorite parts of the complex, specifically because it includes a character named Genius Boy. Um, <laughs> this, yeah, this character his his full name is Ramon Berkowitz. Um, and he is like a start, a, he, a startup owner and, um, he has a company, uh, that features, uh, this little animated character called fuzz, the slug that we created. It was like this whole, we created basically a business for this guy <laughs> in the fictional complex. And it, it was, you know, I mean, that's what happens when, when you're just kind of riffing off with somebody with like the, the fire hose of creativity that is ADHD, mm-hmm. yeah, you right, know? Right. And um, so, yeah, so this is, this clip is kind of featuring Ramon uh, and kind of his antics around the complex. All right, here we go. How am I supposed to manage the complex when no one tells me anything? <laughs> Sounds like a really chaotic environment you're living in. Oh, I haven't even told you about Ramon, the genius startup boy. He paid almost a year's worth of rent in advance. He's crazy smart and really friendly, but super unpredictable. I think he works like 90 hours a week, but some weeks he hangs around the complex as if he's jobless. He goes through waves of having people over, and then that eventually stops, and he quits picking up his mail, and I think he's moved away, but then all of a sudden he pops up again. Oh, Jules! I'm glad I found you. Did the hay bales get delivered? Wait, is that what got delivered earlier? Yeah, I was going to have a petting zoo for a a garden party, but... In my garden? Well, it's a community garden for the complex, right? Either way, change of plans. They're swinging by to pick up the hay, but i got to get back to the office. Thanks for understanding. Sure enough, there was a wall of hay in the courtyard. I can't believe they delivered it without me noticing. Anyway, they came back and picked it all up, but there's still hay all over the place. Half of my life is just cleaning up their messes. There you go. (laughs) That's about it. That tells the story. I gotta just, this is off the topic, but it just reminds me of something that my husband did. (laughs) These are my favorite stories. He, (laughs) we had a windstorm. This was probably like three years ago. We had a windstorm and we live, you know, behind a mountain and there's lots of trees behind us and a hill and one tree fell down. One tree fell down. And all of a sudden (laughs) this one tree falling down became this big, huge project where he uh, rented one of those what are they? The little dumping truck things. And we had like, like, a, like he, he rented equipment. Like, yes, big- he rented equipment. We had zones. Like this was going to be zone one. This was going to be zone <laughs> two. All because of one tree that fell down. <laughs> Did he get a chipper? Did he go as far as a chipper? Mickey, when I hear that, I go, oh my God, that sounds like so much fun. Yeah. And when I hear that, I cringe. Like it's. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Took two years. 
So the first summer, I couldn't even go back there because I was so stressed out about the whole thing. Tell me more. How many zones were there? And did it what? (laughs) No, yeah, for me, I mean, I have so many other things I would like to pick up with a shovel of some sort. (laughs) We can do, we can knock out a whole bunch of projects. This is opportunity. In one of the zones, they, my son and his friends, they decided to do a big bonfire. Well, the problem is <laughs> you can't do a bonfire when, first of all, you still live in city limits and you're behind a big, huge mountain with trees all over you. Like, it's not safe. And and there's a burn ban. <laughs> the fire trucks came. So what, we're, and so what we're describing, right, Nikki, you had the complex at your home. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. James, I think I have it in my home a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking that this is what the audience that's going to be listening to this is going to be saying. They're going to go, yeah. oh, my God, that just happened yesterday. <laughs> I think so, too. I think there's a lot of stories there that people are going to relate to. And, yeah. uh, you know, I will tell you, you know, the uh, the, the co-writer for this, uh, Robin, who is she, Robin Shotsonoff, who is my writing coach and editor who helped me with Focus Forward. And she's just brilliant um, in being a writing coach. Um uh, and helping carry my voice in the book as my writing went along and those kind of things. Um, but she also has ADHD herself as an adult. Her passion is writing books. And so the creativity in this space with Jules was just phenomenal. She mm-hmm. is a musician and she's an author and she's a contractor and she's all this. It was she's so a, much fun. She's such an eclectic individual. So I yeah. just have to give so much props to Robin too, as far as writing this. And she was here as part of the production and helping to lead you know, the voice actors and these voice actors were like, this is the wildest story <laughs> in the world. You know, we did it over a weekend and, you know, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. You do a really good job though, where you can hear the steps and you can hear the door knocking. Like you really do get, a, you know, you visualize what this complex might look like even, yeah. you know, like I started thinking about what the character started looking like and what that courtyard looked like. And so it's, it's great. I, and it's also amazing to me that, you know, this is a 15 minute show, right? Like the very first episode is 15 minutes. Yeah. Each episode is around 10 to 15 minutes. Isn't it amazing? The work that, that goes into like when you were talking about the scripts and how you guys had to go yeah. back and forth, like it, 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 yeah, kudos to you because it, it is a lot of editing. Yep. And- yeah. Yeah. Well, I would just say the the production value is very, very high and it's, it, it's sometimes hard to find in a, a vast marketplace of podcasts to, to be able to hear all of the voices and to, to yes. know that it's editorial editorially been, been well strategized and, and, and crafted. So it's really from a podcast perspective, it's, it's a treat to listen to. I, Thank you so much. I will also tell you, a backstory on the production. So we recorded all the audio and all of this like last spring and wrote it. Right. Mm-hmm. And then this guy oh, takes yeah. off for Southeast Asia for three and a half months. <laughs> and I'm like <laughs> left thinking, is this really going to finish? It? And he came back this fall and finished it, but it's like, it was a two step process and man, the whole thing was recorded. I'm like, you got that backed up, right? And where is yeah. it? And it isn't in a vault. Yeah. And I'm like, we can't lose this. <laughs> so it was a very separated project, but worked beautifully because he wanted to go travel the world for a while. Yeah. It's great. Well, it's, it's really great. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit? Uh, you know, we've. I, I will say that you have agreed so kindly to to let our uh, our preview listeners hear the whole episode at the end of this podcast. So not in the live stream, but as soon as you know, it'll go live to our Patreon listeners, and you'll be able to hear the whole episode early. But tell us a little bit about your launch plan. Uh, when can people hear it? Where can they find it? Yeah, we're launching we're launching it on um, the twelfth Monday, um, which is um, Monday. I think it's. This coming Monday, yeah. This yes, yeah, this coming Monday. It's in three um, days. Yep, yeah. and uh, we are going to be releasing one every week. Um, but we've got six episodes of the complex itself, and then we're going to be releasing an afterthoughts um, after really. each after each episode. And so we'll have a release of the of the complex itself, and then the next week it'll be the afterthoughts, and then the complex, the afterthoughts. And it's going to, um, and so certainly you can get to the links at jamesochoa.com. We'll yeah. get you a link for sign up uh, to be and able then, to get the episodes. Yeah, you can find the podcast. And you already have a trailer in there, right? I mean, you already, I noticed you already have a trailer in the feed. Uh, is it in iTunes yet, or is it just over at Podbean? It is? Yeah, so it's in iTunes, Podbean, Google Play. Uh, Stitcher. It's in all the major kind of directories you can go to find podcasts. Um, it's not in Spotify. Uh, it'll be in Spotify once kind of 
uh, it's halfway through the the session because you need like five episodes to get onto Spotify. So but, yeah, it's pretty much everywhere else though. It's fairly yeah. easy to find. Just fantastic. We'll put links everywhere. Uh, and, uh, you know, I may even put, it, for people to earn it, I'm going to put all 45 minutes of Paul Stanley uh, <laughs> from Kiss before, and then they'll be able to listen. To the no, no, you well, are we'll not. That out. <laughs> See, we have to stay off the paint process. No. It's not good. We, we clearly have some issues, me and Nikki, to work out, but we'll get there. I'm confident. We've been working together a yeah. long time. This has been so great, you guys. James and Jules Ochoa, we sure appreciate all of the work you do. Uh, and, and Jules, great to meet you, man. Thank you for, for joining uh, the show here. Yeah, you as well. Thank Absolutely. you so much for and, having um, us. You know, if you get a chance, the other end of this is that this is going to be done in 12 weeks. If we get feedback from your listeners and other kind of things, uh, I'd love to come back on in two or three months and kind of see how things have rolled out. I'd be happy to if that's something y'all ever want to do. Just let us know. Oh, we, we love having you. So, yeah, absolutely. So, does that mean that there might be like a season two? You know, uh, man, <laughs> you never know. I, you, get I, someone, you get someone shiny enough out there okay. uh, who's got some philanthropic money would be helpful. <laughs> uh, producing this uh, it worked a little overtime last year but it's been so much fun but i'd love that yeah we talked about season twos and things like that that are so much fun to add on who knows nikki who yeah knows in our, know. who knows in my add mind potentially yeah that's all we got for the main show thank you everybody for downloading and listening to this particular show we sure appreciate your time and attention on behalf of james and jules ochoa and nikki kinzer i'm pete wright uh, and we'll catch you next time right here on taking control the adhd podcast uh, and now Here's the whole episode one of The Complex. Hey everyone, I'm Jules Anthony. And I'm James Ochoa. Welcome to The Complex, a podcast about ADHD with fittingly a slightly different format. Basically, I am the idealistic apartment manager and owner of a new building called The Complex. The place is full of eclectic tenants that I have absolutely no idea how to manage. So, I seek out help. And that's where I come in. Jewel starts coming to me to understand more about ADHD, and all the while recounting moments from life at The Complex. You'll be listening in on these sessions and hearing each of these ridiculous moments played out in front of you. Yep. Now, just to be clear, ADHD is real, but the characters and personalities in this story are fictional. Any resemblance they have to someone in real life is pure coincidence. So, if you will, sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy life at The Complex. The Complex is sponsored by Focus Forward, Navigating the Storms of Adult ADHD by James Ochoa. Learn about the emotional distress syndrome and how to successfully navigate the ups and downs of the ADHD life. Get Focus Forward in audio, print, or ebook format at Amazon or jamesochoa.com. Oh, hey, you must be Jules Anthony. Welcome to the Life Empowerment Center. It's great to meet you. Hey, sorry, I'm so late. I just, time always seems to get away from me. Oh, don't worry, it's nothing new to me. I, we know a lot about being late in this office. I've been doing this 28 years, and I joke that I usually take my 10-minute break at the beginning of the hour rather than the end. Hey, would you like some water, coffee, tea? Oh, um, some water would be great. Yeah, thanks. Okay, I'll be right back. Uh, let's see. Um, James Ochoa, licensed professional counselor, St. Ed's University, Masters of Education and Counseling and Guidance. Uh, oh, a Himalayan salt lamp and and a fountain. Wow, he has so many weird toys in here too. Uh, what's what is that? F Focused Forward by James Ochoa. I didn't know he wrote a book. Yep, I wrote a book. It took me twenty seven years to write. That's how long it took me to figure out the emotional stress of ADHD, which the book is about. Hey, go ahead and have a seat anywhere. Wait, so is ADHD your specialty? Yeah, yeah it is, but, uh, but tell me, how can I help you today? Well, you know, I don't really think I need therapy per se, but I thought it'd be good to just talk to somebody because a ton of stress has been building up in my life recently. Okay, sounds like a good place to start. Well... 
Yeah, I mean, the people in my apartment complex are driving me insane, for one. What, are these your neighbors? Well, sort of. I mean, I live there, but I also own the building and manage it. It's called The Complex, and it's not just a regular apartment building. It's kind of a lifelong dream of mine, actually. It's a green-built, co-housing, sustainable development. Everyone has their own space, but we also share common areas, almost like a dorm. There's ride-sharing, there's a food garden, and people take turns harvesting and watering the plants, or at least theoretically they do. And I have great tenants, different ages, different backgrounds, all really interesting people, but times like this morning just make me want to walk away and never come back. Knock it off, Bernard! I'm trying to sleep right now! Hey, Amanda. Is there a problem? Seriously, Jules, my last caffeine just wore off, and I swear, Bernard plays that trumpet every morning like it's his day job. I mean, it is his day job. You can't be a musician if you don't practice. Can he not do it so early? Well, it's 11 a.m., but sure, I'll talk to him. I don't know why I always leave everything to the last minute. I had a geography project I had to finish last night, and I couldn't get it started until, like, midnight. Then I realized I had to go out and get a bunch of sticky notes because I had run out. I always do this. Don't be so hard on yourself. I'm sure you'll do great on that project. Cute pajamas, by the way. Is that the fish from Finding Dory? No. They're queen angelfish pajamas. Duh. Uh. (laughs) Are they fish from Finding Dory? Oh, joy. Another thing to add to the list. Bernard, you got a sec? Morning, Jules. How are you this fine day? I'm doing all right. Listen, I wanted to Did talk to you... Did you catch the comet last night? What, was there a comet last Hannah's night? Hannah's Comet. Comes around every 82 years on the lunar calendar, and it blows my mind every time. Anyway, I got a little musical phrase out of watching it, kind of a snippet, and I'm working it into my concerto for household objects in A-flat with tritones. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about that. Could you only practice your trumpet during certain times of the day, or maybe post your practice schedule in the courtyard? Oh, you're not to worry, my friend. I'm done with the trumpet for the day, maybe for the week. I'm about to pick up my mizmar, which is a kind of double reeded the ob- oboesque thing. Truth is, I barely know how to play this thing, but I'm getting there. Hey, man, I love that ringtone. Glee, bleak. So, B- Bernard, Amanda's trying to Oh, you're not to worry, my friend. I will bring down the volume. That is not a problem. Okay. Thanks, Bernard. Well... I tried. Jules! Jules, come on, open up! Jessica, what are you doing? Oh, thank God you're here. Here, take these keys. No, not those ones, these ones. And you'll be here all day, right? Well, I... Good, so sometime between two and four, or maybe one, give the keys to a girl. But I've got to go. Bye. Wait, Jessica, any girl? No, my daughter. Bye. She has a daughter? Jesus, who keeps texting me? Hello. This is Alex from Global Worldwide Trucking. Just letting you know I dropped off your delivery. Have a great day. I had no idea what the delivery was for. Bernard kept playing this oboe thing, and I didn't know Jessica had a daughter. How am I supposed to manage the complex when no one tells me anything? (laughs) Sounds like a really chaotic environment you're living in. Oh, I haven't even told you about Ramon, the genius startup boy. He paid almost a year's worth of rent in advance. He's crazy smart and really friendly, but super unpredictable. I think he works like 90 hours a week, but some weeks he hangs around the complex as if he's jobless. He goes through waves of having people over, and then that eventually stops, and he quits picking up his mail, and I think he's moved away, but then all of a sudden he pops up again. Oh, Jules! I'm glad I found you. Did the hay bales get delivered? Wait, is that what got delivered earlier? Yeah, I was going to have a petting zoo for a a garden party, but... In my garden? Well, it's a community garden for the complex, right? Either way, change of plans. They're swinging by to pick up the hay, but i got to get back to the office. Thanks for understanding. 
Sure enough, there was a wall of hay in the courtyard. I can't believe they delivered it without me noticing. Anyway, they came back and picked it all up, but there's still hay all over the place. Half of my life is just cleaning up their messes. So, it's interesting. A lot of what you're saying sounds like what I wrote about in my book, Focus Forward. There's a lot of chaos that comes with the diagnosis of adult ADHD. Wait, adult? I thought ADHD was a kid thing. Oh no, we've known since 1992 that it's not just a kid thing. And when you think about it, it makes sense. ADHD is a genetic condition. It's passed down, just like hair color or height. It's very inheritable. I can't diagnose people third party, but what you're describing sounds like the chaotic stress that comes with adult ADHD. It would be really weird, not to mention a statistical anomaly, if all your tenants had some form of ADHD. Well, but everyone at the complex is different than everyone else at the complex. None of them are even close to the same kind of person. Yeah, well, ADHD looks really different for different people. There are 18 criteria on the checklist for diagnoses, and how those 18 things look for different people creates a million different combinations. Also, a lot of people with ADHD make it to adulthood without ever having been diagnosed. People just think they're quirky. Maybe they're really intense all the time, or they can't stop talking. For instance, you get people who grow up in military households with such rigid structure that their ADHD doesn't show up until after they've left home, at which point they have no idea how to run their lives. These people can develop secondary issues, like obsessive-compulsive disorder. Oh, that sounds like Mr. Crispy. Mr. Crispy? That's a funny name. Another tenant at the complex? Yeah, that's, that's not his real name, but he's always wearing one of those paper Krispy Kreme hats. Like, all the time? Yeah, like, all the time. So, does he work at Krispy Kreme? Well, it's complicated. The, the guy is really complicated. I'm pretty sure he works there, but he definitely has more money than he'd ever get from working at Krispy Kreme. I mean, that's none of my business. He always pays his rent on time, and actually, he's the most organized guy in the complex. God, tell me more about him. Oh, you should see his apartment. There's sticky notes everywhere. No art or anything on the walls. Just a bunch of random to-do lists. And he has white noise machines in every room with buzzers and alarms going off all the time as reminders. Plus, everything is at right angles to everything else. It almost looks like a military barracks. And actually, he might be an army brat. He is from Colleen. Well, it's really interesting. You're describing so many quirks that come with ADHD. If all your tenants at the complex really have it, you would absolutely be stressed out. The good thing is, I can help you with that. <laughs> really? I can't even imagine this whole thing being able to resolve itself. Okay, first of all, if it's ADHD, it never resolves itself. But you can learn how to handle it. The first thing is to calm yourself and not personalize what's going on with them. But how the hell am I supposed to do that? They're people, so I personalize them. Also, I like every single one of them, or I wouldn't have rented them apartments. Yeah, I get it. It's hard to take a step back, but it's not impossible. To begin with, I can help you understand what's going on. I will say that it's just because these people live in chaos doesn't mean they're broken. In fact, there's a lot of great things that come with ADHD. Lots of people with ADHD own their own businesses. Lots of them are really creative especially when prompted to find solutions to their own challenges. They like stimulation, anything that's new and interesting. You might have attracted those kind of people to the complex because there's a lot to do there and it's on the cutting edge. People with ADHD love cutting edge stuff. Yeah, that sounds about right. Do you have any time next week to talk? Because believe me, I have more stories. Hey everyone, next week an episode called Afterthoughts will be released where James and I talk about all the ADHD moments he spotted in this episode. He'll be giving all kinds of tips and tricks to help those with and around ADHD, so be sure to tune in. You can find the Afterthoughts as well as the coming episodes of The Complex on iTunes, Google Play, or at jamesochoa.com. 
The Complex is produced by Jules Ochoa and co-written by Jules Ochoa and Robin Chachanoff. The executive producer and local ADHD professional is James Ochoa, LPC. The voice actors for this episode were James Ochoa as himself, Jules Ochoa as Jules, Tom Doyle as Bernard, Marina Deo Pedraza as Amanda, Noel Gowlin as Genius Boy, and Jenny Larson as Jessica. <laughs>